Troubleshooting the refrigeration operation is done in two basic steps. Step one is to determine if the air temperature sensor appears to be functioning properly. Please see the video link on how to troubleshoot temperature sensors to assist in determining if the cause of the refrigeration issue is related to faulty temperature sensors. Step two, if you are continuing with this video after reviewing the temperature sensor troubleshooting video, you have identified the air temperature sensor is working properly. The evaporator sensor is providing a live reading showing no asterisk symbol. The sampler is circulating warm air into the sample compartment. There is no large amount of ice buildup on the coils prohibiting cold air circulation. Check to see if the compressor fan is running. You should be able to see and feel the air being pushed out of the back of the sampler. The compressor fan might be running, but the compressor itself might not be operating correctly. The next step shows the removal and troubleshooting of the refrigeration sled to determine how to proceed with the repair. From the back of the unit, remove the bottom protection plate. Remove the back cover by loosening the top three screws, then remove all remaining screws. Carefully remove the styrofoam. Remove all screws from the refrigeration sled assembly. At the bottom of the unit, clip the black cable tie attached to the power cord. Remove the refrigeration sled assembly. Keeping it close to the unit, pull it backwards, rotating to the side to reduce movement of additional wiring and cords. In order to verify if the compressor is actually running, the compressor fan power must be removed to be able to sense the small amount of vibration coming from a running compressor. Locate the compressor fan power harness and follow it back to the compressor side cover. Remove the grounding strap and screw from the side of the compressor wiring cover. Press the locking tab and pull to remove the electrical connection cover on the side of the compressor. Locate and disconnect the fan wire going to the compressor relay box. Reapply power to the 5800 and enter the refrigeration diagnostics menu. With configure blinking, press the enter key. Press the left up arrow key twice to get run diagnostics, then press the enter key. Press the left up arrow key seven times to get refridge temperature, then press the enter key. Here you will find the air and EVAP sensor numbers. With the compressor on, put your hand on top of the compressor to check for vibration. If it's vibrating and there isn't any cooling or frost on the coils in about 10 to 15 minutes of it running by itself, we know that there is a problem with the cooling system. We will need to replace the whole refrigeration sled. With the compressor fan removed from the circuit and the 5800 powered up, if the compressor is not running by indication of slight vibration, the capacitor, relay, and thermal overload must be checked. AC power must be removed for these next checks. The cap and relay box will need to be checked as well as the thermal overload mounted directly on the compressor. Locate and remove the compressor power connection, making note that the orange wire is positioned closest to the compressor fan motor. Locate and remove the thermal overload wiring connection from the compressor. The compressor power pins connect to the compressor power harness with the orange and white wiring. The top pin connects to the thermal overload device. Using a digital voltmeter measuring resistance, connect one lead to the single socket terminal on the terminal overload and measure resistance from the single socket to each of the terminals. There should be nearly zero ohms resistance between these points. Having even a few ohms resistance can indicate a faulty thermal overload device that would need to be replaced. The compressor relay can be checked. The relay is completely potted, so the checks must be done on the attached wiring connections. Locate and remove the blue AC return line that connects the relay box to the AC power cord. On newer models, Locate and remove the compressor heater wire harness so that all wiring from the relay box is now isolated from the unit. Checking the resistance of the compressor power harness by measuring resistance between the two connections. Resistance should be approximately 5 ohms. 
Any value higher than 7 ohms would indicate a faulty relay and the potted relay box will need to be replaced. Checking the resistance of the blue AC return line by connecting one lead of the voltmeter to the orange wire connector on the compressor power harness to the blue AC return line coming from the relay box and measure resistance of approximately 5 ohms. Any value higher than 7 ohms would indicate a faulty relay and the potted relay box will need to be replaced. Check the resistance from each of the black wires on the potted relay box to the orange wire connection for the compressor power connector. Either connection should measure 5 ohms. Check the resistance from either of the black wires on the potted relay box to the blue AC return line coming from the relay box. Either connection should measure 0 ohms. If readings range from 2 to 4 ohms higher, this indicates a bad relay and needs replaced. Reinstall the compressor thermal overload to the top pin on the compressor. Next, install the compressor power connector, making sure that the orange wire connection is positioned closest to the compressor fan motor. Locate and connect one of the wires from the compressor fan to one of the black wires coming from the potted relay box. Connect the other compressor fan wire to the left connector on the compressor thermal overload. Locate the AC power wiring harness coming from the 5800 power supply. Connect the brown wire from this harness to the right side connector on the thermal overload on the side of the compressor. Connect the blue wire from the potted relay box to the blue wire coming from the 5800 power supply harness. Connect the remaining black wire from the potted relay box to the compressor heater harness. Older power supplies do not have the additional wiring needed to power the compressor heater strap on the newer replacement sleds. Locate the compressor wiring cover and reinstall onto the side of the compressor and secure with the screw and grounding strap. Reapply power to the 5800 and verify frost buildup on the coils. After verification of frost, remove power from the unit before reinstalling the refrigeration sled assembly. Replace the refrigeration sled assembly, making sure all cords and tubes are lined with the sled. Important! Make sure to place the drip tube into the drip tray. Lift and slide the sled into place. To hold the refrigeration sled in place, use one screw at the top of the unit. Next, rotate through all eight screws to finalize the sled install. Important! Turn the screws with a screwdriver counterclockwise until it clicks into place. Finish all screws with a power drill to secure into place, but do not over tighten. Carefully replace the styrofoam insulation. Slide the back panel into the three screws left in place, then secure and close the unit. Pull gently on the power cord and use a black cable tie to secure the cord near the panel. This will hold the cord in place, allowing it not to go into the unit. Clip any excess cable tie from the power cord. Slide the shield back in place and secure it with all screws. Plug in and power on the 5800 refrigerated sampler. It is now time to configure and run diagnostics to ensure quality and the correct install. With configure blinking, press the enter key. Press the left up arrow button twice to get run diagnostics, then press the enter key. Press the left up arrow button seven times to get refrigeration temperature and press the enter key. Here you will find the air and EVAP sensor numbers. With compressor on, both air and EVAP numbers will be dropping showing no asterisk symbol. You will notice the EVAP sensor will get cold first before the air sensor. Once completed, return to the main menu. Press exit twice then press enter when you see exit configuration. This will bring you back to the beginning to restart your program as appropriate. The installation and quality check are now complete.